Not a lot of teams had this opportunity, dog. Welcome to the OG Jungle Who Day. Fitting the Cincinnati Bengals will try and win their first Super Bowl ever in Los Angeles, isn't it? Sort of a throwback home game when you think about it. McPherson. And Cincinnati is heading to the Super Bowl. But it will be a home game for the other team. Back-to-back -back years, a home squad will play at home in the big dance. Garoppolo under pressure. Donald got there in the air, intercepted by the Rams. And they may ride to the Super Bowl on that. Snoop, Dre, M, etc. may be performing at half, but maybe they should have gotten Queen to join in because pressure could very well dictate who wins the big one this year. Hey, big boy! I told you no! Rams defense, Bengals offense. Bengals fortunes rest with Joe Burrow most games. Nothing mysterious there. Had a great regular season. You keep making those plays, I'm just gonna throw it up to you every That's time. Easy, bro. Hey. I got like 4, 50 or something. Whoa. But what makes him especially dangerous to deal with heading into this game? His versatility. Stay with me here. Jamar Chase has had quiet games. That was somewhat the case against the Chiefs. He made an impact, but not a holy chase game. There he is to the end zone, and he comes down with it. Outrageous. What a catch. Chase, 101. Forget about it. He faced several double teams and the Chiefs' top corner, who is good, but not Jalen good. Ramsey versus Chase, key Super Bowl matchup number one to watch. Great defense, but you can make the play though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Hey, play on. We got to finish this game, all right? For real, for real. If Ramsey can erase or partially erase Chase, it tees things up for Higgins. Remember, he was over 1,000 yards as the number two this season, over 100 yards in their championship win. They go way down the field, and it's there, Tony, at the 40. It's Higgins, Steve, right in rhythm all the way to the 38. We warned everyone in our last Cincy preview. The Bengals are far from a one-man passing show. Higgins and Tyler Boyd allow them to adapt. They were down 21-3 as the half was winding down against Kansas City. They went to a quick pass approach in the second half. Joe Cool 2.0 may have finished the game under seven yards per attempt, but he went 14 for 19 with two TDs for the game on quick throws. Pass across the middle. Higgins trying to buy some room. He's got the first down and a whole lot more. Picked up an extra 10 or 11 yards once he turned it upfield. That quick pass approach may be vital against the Rams, and that's because there would appear to be a massive mismatch in the trenches. Burrow was the most sacked QB in football. In trouble, Spence free. Sack! 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 That porous Bengals O-line now lines up against LA's three-headed sack dragon that helped LA finish in the Bob's 50 Burger Club in 2021. I read around, he was just like, low. I did this right there. I'm like, oh, no. Ah! Cincinnati fans, you're like, bro, what do we care about sacks? The Titans dragged down Joe by his jersey number, by his jersey number, and we won. He's had a couple five-sack games with ratings over 120, and he fared well all year against the Blitz and pressure. That was fun. Let's keep it going. We're going to need two more. We're going to need two more. Our house fans, the crack in his play, postseason heat. His rating has dropped to the mid-80s against the Blitz in the playoffs, and by 50 points against pressure. There's Burrow. Looks downfield, and he is picked. Left tackle Jonah Williams was Cincinnati's best lineman, according to Pro Football Focus. Yet he gave up more sacks than any other Bengal, allowed more pressures. Back from the gun, backs it up, under pressure. Fumble, balls loose, picked up by the Raiders at the 40, 35, 30. Against Kansas City, Burrow only met the turf once. The quick snap to throw time helped, and so did the fact the Chiefs were not a team with many sack artists. The Rams have plenty. Williams will be in for a lot of Leonard Floyd and Von Miller. Garoppolo is sacked! Von Miller! And the interior of their line will be dealing with that AD guy. Be relentless and let's dominate! Let's go. If LA's defense for some reason doesn't hurry Burrow, Chase can escape Ramsey like Mike Evans was able to do a few times, then look out for the air raid the Bengals can unleash. Burrow led the NFL in completion percentage and yards per attempt. Hey, oh my! That touchdown's on you guys. You gave me hella time. Hey, what I'm talking about.
That impressive combo is attributable in part to Chase being a yak monster. Jamar Chase at the 50, great speed at the 40 of Kansas City, outrunning the entire secondary. 15, 10, 5, touchdown, Cincinnati Bengals. Once again, Ricky of the year, y'all know what time it is. The Rams just faced Jimmy Garoppolo and Debo Samuel, a little bit like Burrow and Chase in some ways. They both ranked high this year in yards per completion and yards after the catch. Debo scored on them 72 yards and a TD. Debo Samuel, a hard guy to get down on the ground in the open field. He makes a couple guys miss. A big time run and a big time play. But just four catches on seven receptions. They held Garoppolo well under his yards per completion average. When you get pressure in his face, there goes Reader right there. And he had a chance to undercut that ball and make a play on it. The Rams did allow a high completion percentage this season, but they were strong when it came to yards per completion allowed. Combined with their pass rush, Burrow may need to continue his quick draw ways. Garoppolo throws back across the field and nearly picked by Ramsey. Quick passes often land in the hands of running backs and tight ends. 70 of Burrow's yards against the Chiefs were to his two primary running backs. This pass Ward, look at him go! Inside the 20, into the 10, oh he takes it the distance! Wow, what a jolt! Just when the Bengals needed it. it deep down the middle of the field, Uzama makes the catch at the 25, escapes a hit, running between the hash marks. Touchdown! Burrow deep to Uzama. Tight end day. Go crazy. Hey. Bengals run game. Joe Mixon, not usually the focal point. They were only 19th in rush attempts for the season. We're not done yet. Championship. Championship football. Come on. His performance against the Chiefs reflective of his 2021. He might only be a four yard a carry type guy, but he sprinkles in some nice runs that keeps defenses just off balance enough, not to mention what he does for the passing game. Keep running it on first down, this time they break away. Mixon, high stepping and still going, down to about the 15. Burrow, plenty athletic enough to take off two, saw it against the Chiefs, key runs as well, five yards per. Still didn't get him. Oh my goodness, how did he get away? Is out and he's gonna have the first the Rams down. are not an easy team to run on. Weren't for the year, nothing's changed in the playoffs. Mitchell in the backfield, great gains, a loss of one. Bengals offense, second least penalized this year. Flags weren't a problem against KC. Turnovers, one in each of their last two games. It's intercepted. Hooker on a deflect. It went off of T-Ride's hands, and Hooker is able to snatch it. Rams defense, takeaways in every game since week 10, playoffs included. Disaster. My goodness, you can't make that mistake if you're Kyler Murray. Wow. Let's go! Let's go! LA played good defense in the red zone, but they weren't anything special this season forcing punts, or when it came to points per game allowed. Gave up 21 and 28 in their last two, respectively. Brady looking Brady. Throws the ball downfield. He's got Evans toward the end zone. Evans makes the catch. Touchdown, Tampa Bay. The Bengals' big play skills explain why they were eighth in points per game at 27.1. Yet they were just 16th on third down and in the red zone. Don't need to be quite as good at those when you can score from anywhere on the field. Throws downfield for a wide open boy. Catches at the 30. Great jump cut. Back toward the middle of the field to the 10. So if you go by the law of average, Averages and you get the Bengals to 24 or so points, can they hold Matthew Stafford and company under that? Really, can they hold Cooper Cup in check? I'm not the only one who watches him play and keeps blurting. How in the world is he so wide open? Over and over again. Stafford, end zone, Cup. He's got it. Touchdown Rams. Cup has to be priority number one for the Bengals. Stafford has been good. Coop has been off the charts. Triple crown winner, and he's not letting up 140 plus yards in back to back games in the postseason. Stafford, end zone, Cup. Got it. Touchdown Rams. The Bengals don't have a big name corner like LA does. They did hold Tyreek Hill from breaking free and going nuts. If they could hold Cup to under 80 yards in one score, that would be a win. To the end zone. Oh, what a catch! It is caught for the touchdown. The Rams number two, though, showed up to play versus the Niners as well. OBJ also broke the century mark, so takes more than one good corner to deal with the Rams passing attack. Here is Beckham, found a hole in this defense and another completion to Odell Beckham, this time 
for 26. And Stafford consistently uses his tight ends too. Tyler Higby got hurt, but Kendall Blanton stepped in and filled his shoes nicely. We'll toss back to Stafford and now a throw to Blanton, the tight end. A lot of room down inside the 20. Cincinnati's defense is a lot like LA's. They haven't played lockdown D against the pass. Sort of average, high completion percentage allowed, low yards per catch allowed though. Keep tackling and flying around now. The corners Cup and OBJ will face the most. Your next key one-on-one -on -one matchups, Eli Apple, Chidobe Awuzie. Excellent job by Eli Apple. He doesn't bite on it at all. He sits on the route, comes back, gets that right arm in there to tip the ball up in the air. A top. The pick made by Awuzie. The key for the Bengals in the end may also be their ability to harass the quarterback. They have three dudes who can get home to see their mom. All three got to Patrick Mahomes, Sam Hubbard, and Trey Hendrickson, pressuring him five times each as well. Third down, and he falls again as Hendrickson gets to him. Now being chased. He's in trouble, and he's tripped up back at the eight-yard line. Hubbard with the sack. They're after him again, and that's the first sack for the Bengal defense. It's Hendrickson and Hill combining. Pressure Stafford and the odds go up, you will see him force things or not be able to get enough mustard on his deep throws. He's picked, no, dropped. Unbelievable. Stafford may have gotten away with one and not another. He did throw a pick, but he finished with over 330 yards against the 49ers, two TDs, and he was hit nine times. That's a lot. Third down here, Stafford throws. Beckham with a first down catch. Good throw, good catch. As they barely got that play away and Stafford under pressure again. Bengals fans, Stafford is the key. He plays well, hard to beat them. 11 and 0 when he hits 100 rating. Easier to play well when you have time. The Rams line did a solid job protecting him in 2021, fifth lowest pressure percentage allowed. Hey man, there's nowhere else I'd rather be than in this circle with this group. Let's, go. Let's fight, man. Right tackle, Rob Havenstein. He didn't have a terrible season, but he gave up seven sacks. Perspective, the most allowed by anyone this year, 11. And he sees Stafford, he's got eyes on him, and immediately he comes off of Rob Havenstein, the right tackle. The Bengals don't blitz much, don't expect them to against LA, since Stafford shreds teams that send extra pressure. The Bengals rely on their front four most of the time, sometimes their front three. They would love to repeat their showing against Mahomes when they got to him twice with three-man pass rushes. You'll see up top, go meet at the quarterback, and that is a huge play for the Bengals. X factor on this side of things, also the run game. LA hasn't really run it well recently, only 23rd in attempts for the year. Bengals haven't been great stopping ball carriers. Cam Akers in the game. You heard Aaron say left with a shoulder injury, and he gets half a yard here. Here is. Edwards allowed, finding an opening and taking it to the 23-yard line. Cincinnati also wasn't great this year when it comes to red zone defense, third down defense, or points per game allowed. Mahomes dancing around, spinning around twice, finds freedom, and in the end zone, he finds Kelsey. But they are in the final game because they were able to come through in some key moments. That's what they'll look for against LA, the unexpected turns in momentum. Is it there, Hill, he's got to be the defender, and the Bengals make the stop to close out the half. Cincinnati has created many of those turns via takeaways, two in each of their three playoff wins. And it is intercepted on the rebound by Bell. On Bell, they're not the the underdogs anymore. The Rams turned it over four times against Tampa Bay. Stafford threw the one INT versus San Francisco, though it should have been two. Stafford, end zone, pass in the air and picked by Ward. LA isn't penalty prone on this side of the ball, no issues versus the Niners. So kicking games, both are in good feet. Edge goes to the kicker who has multiple nicknames already as a rookie, a kicker with more than one nickname. McPherson, and Cincinnati is heading to the Super Bowl. Shooter McPherson, shooter. Here's Gay from 30 yards out. And it's a perfect snap, good hold. Right down Broadway. Coaching, well, look at that. Zach is all's growed up already. I kicked this field goal, right? I and mean, we get to stop and win again. Time for a little apprentice master action, but this is like episode three when Obi-Wan and Darth Vader were young. Zach Taylor versus Sean McVay. Yes! Let's go! 
Let's go! What a chess match this makes for. You'd give McVay the edge normally. He's the vet, sort of. He's 36, Taylor 38, two youngest coaches in the NFL, two youngest to ever coach in the Super Bowl. Think about it, they were teenagers when Brady won his first Lombardi. Great job, man, love you, great job. More home field, Bucks did it last year. LA has won both their playoff games at home, but they went five and three during the regular season. And there's the reaction from SoFi Stadium. Let's go! Let's go! Bengals beat the number one and two teams in their house in the postseason, went five and two on the road. Okay, five and three, but the last one didn't count or matter. We're not done yet. I'm really the best in the league. You know that. Y'all better respect. Okay, let's try something new. Always fun to stack Super Bowl teams side by side and pick the one that has the edge by position. This will elicit the most that's cap or come on bros or whatever. It's going right where I want it to every time. Bad news for them. Okay, quarterback, super tight, going with Burrow, but just barely. Stafford's had some trouble with the deep ball. Again, this is close to a wash. O-line, Rams, nothing to explain here. Running backs, another close one, giving Mixon the slight edge. Pass catchers, hardest category to choose in my book. I say push, but it's playoff time, so no ties. Fine, Rams because Cup has been unstoppable. Kickers, McPherson's postseason swagger gets it. D-line, no question, it's LA. Linebackers, tough call. Logan Wilson and Jermaine Pratt take it though. DBs, back to the Rams. Ramsey factor tilts it. Coaches, McVay has the better resume and head coaching experience in the Super Bowl. Intangibles, Rams as well, they're at home and home teams are still undefeated in the Super Bowl. You, of course, don't have to agree. Break down your takes for the game in the comments section. Predictions included, of course. Here are our final 10 for the year. NFL.com writer Kevin Patcher was our pick king this year. Fellow writer Grant Gordon and MJD were close behind. Colleen Wolf came in third. Should be noted, MJD and Mark Dolgarian had Rams games right most often. And Dolgarian picked Bengals games right the most in our group. Hey, another hearty thanks to all those who watch these each year. I am lucky to do this. Reading what everyone says is my favorite part, even if it's someone calling the analyst an idiot. I take offense to that, by the way. I am not an analyst. So I like how you did that. Yeah, I'm with you. I see what you did. But thanks for riding along this season. NFL football is still the best. That's what I'm talking about, baby. That's what I'm talking about. Hey. Aggie, baby.